I was honored to be, I was well, honored or not, I was there. Um, Robert Bork and I represented co-appellants in a case in the Second Circuit a number of years ago. And the major issue, we thought, and we eventually won on this, was the government had presented what they knew or should have known was perjurious testimony. But the case involved the intangible rights doctrine of mail fraud. And Judge Meskill was so happy that Robert Bork is standing in front of him arguing. I mean, really, it was like, and so he said, now, uh, Mr. Bork, I, uh, would you care to address the, a little bit this issue of the application of the intangible rights doctrine in the context of corporate governance, you know? This is like, excuse me, here comes the softball. Are you ready? Do you have your bat? Here it is. And Bork was reading his argument and he looked up. He said, well, everybody knows that that doctrine could bring corporate America to its knees. Now, as I was saying, <laughs> uh, and Judge Meskill looked like he'd been hit with a, a wet fish or something <laughs> and went out of his way to write bad stuff about that issue in the opinion, even though he reversed. Me, I tried to get it back. I'm not Robert Bork. But when it was my turn, I said, you know, I'd like to come to this issue of the intangible rights. Well, I'm not, so Judge Altamari from Long Island, a Republican from Long Island, says, Mr. Tiger, intangible rights. Everybody, I mean, everybody knows that intangible rights are real for some purposes. And I said, well, he says, what? Have you never heard of incorporeal hereditaments? And I said, Judge Altamari, in the little town in Texas where I come from, people talk of little else. <laughs> uh, 